Hi, welcome back. Today we are going to study an extremely important mechanism known as the Vickrey Clark Groves Mechanism, or VCG for short. This mechanism is a generalization of the Vickrey auction. We know that the Vickrey auction was efficient and incentive compatible in some settings, but it didn't work well in others. In the roommate's dilemma that we studied before in this class, it is not even well defined. For such cases, we can use the Vickrey Clark Groves mechanism, which is based on the idea of asking each individual to pay or be compensated depending on how much they contribute to society in a specific sense that we will define ahead. Consider two different situations. Think of a society populated by a number of people, one of whom is Bob. In the first situation, we are going to consider society altogether as a whole and we are going to consider what is the efficient outcome um, if everybody was there. In the second scenario, we're going to think about what happens if we were able to exclude Bob from society and we were only, to con we were only able to consider the rest of the individuals. In, these seconds, in each of these two settings, one in which Bob is a member of society and one in which he is not, we could figure out what is the efficient outcome, what is the efficient thing to do, and uh, we could compare the utility of everybody in society except for Bob in each of these two cases. The difference between everybody's utility except for Bob in each of these two situations is what's called Bob's contribution to society. In order to compute it, we need to follow a number of steps. First, we need to figure out what would be the efficient alternative in the benchmark case in which everybody, including Bob, is a member of society. So we need to maximize the sum of everybody's utility, including Bob. And the alternative which maximizes that sum, I'm going to call it A star. Once we have figured out what A star is, we have to figure out the utility that everybody is getting, except for Bob. So remember, we figured out A star taking Bob into account, but then we figure out, given this alternative, what is the utility of everybody except, except for Bob. And I'm going to use the notation W, B for Bob, plus to mean that Bob is included in society. But it's important to note that this is the utility of everybody except for Bob, when Bob is a member of society. Okay, once we have done that, then we do our thought exercise. We remove Bob from society and we ask the question, if Bob was not around, then what would be the, uh, the maximum utility that we could obtain for everybody else? Okay, so now we have to th figure out from the alternatives that we have that, that, that we have enough environment, which is the one that's going to maximize the utility of everyone except for Bob. And I'm going to denote this by B star. The B is not specific to Bob, it's just to make it clear that it's different from A star. Okay, so given this B star alternative, which maximizes everybody's utility without Bob, uh, we have to figure out what is this maximum utility um, that, that people could obtain if Bob was not a member of society. Now, it's important to, to, to notice again that in both cases, in, in the first scenario and in the second one, we are adding up the utility of everybody except for Bob. The difference between the two sums is that in the first case, we are, take, we are thinking about what is the utilitarian alternative A star that, that takes Bob into account, and in the second case, we're looking at the alternative B star that does not take Bob into account. The difference between the two is what we call Bob's contribution to society. Okay. And the VCG mechanism is going to either ask people to pay or be paid based on this difference. So let's look at it in the context of our artwork example, assuming private values and no externality. Uh, do you remember this table from the last slides? If we add up the columns, we can get the sum of everybody's utility from different alternatives. And we can see that the efficient outcome is to give the object to Charlie, which results in a total utilitarian welfare of 10 units. Now, let us try to figure out what is each individual's contribution to society. And let us begin with Bob. If Bob was a member of society, we have already determined that the utilitarian alternative would be to give the object to Charlie and um, the, the utility that Charlie and David would receive from, from this alternative would be equal to 10 plus zero, which is equal to 10. Um, in contrast, if Bob was not around, well, the person with the highest utility would still be Charlie, 
So it would still be efficient to give the object to Charlie, which means that the, um, the utilitarian alternative would be the same, the total welfare of Charlie and David would be the same, and therefore Bob's contribution to society is zero, there is no difference, and we're not going to ask him to pay anything or give him any money. Charlie is a bit more interesting, because with Charlie in society, the efficient thing to do is to give, give her the object, but then Bob's and David's utility are equal to zero. In contrast, if Charlie was not in society, then the person with the highest value would be Bob. The utilitarian alternative would be to give the object to Bob instead of David, because 7 is greater than 4, and therefore the total welfare of Bob and David would be equal to 7, which is greater than 0. Now, in this case that there is a difference, Charlie's contribution to society is going to be the difference between 0 and 7, which is minus 7. Therefore, um, therefore, Charlie, if we wanted him to pay or be compensated based on this difference, we would ask Charlie to pay um, 7, which is the second highest bid. So in this case, uh, we're actually back to the bakery auction. And this shouldn't be surprising. As I mentioned earlier, the VCG mechanism is a generalization of the bakery auction. Now, in general settings, we can define the VCG mechanism as a direct mechanism where we ask each individual to, to report their values, and then we're going to figure out an allocation and transfers based not on the true values, because we cannot observe those, but based on the reported values. The VCG mechanism always chooses the efficient, utilitarian, efficient allocation given the reported values, and to emphasize the dependence on the reported values, I am writing A star as a function of V hat. Then, when it comes down to transfers, well, we are going to compute the contributions to society use, using the reported values, given the steps that we did before, and we're going to pay or ask people to pay uh, depending on, on, on this contribution. So, let us see how this would look like in the context of the art artwork example, but now let's go back to including externalities. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to assume that the magnitude of the externalities is known, so we know that the only externality there is is that if Charlie gets the object, David gets a utility of minus 7. And then the only thing that we need to know about is how much each individual, uh, the personal utility that each individual gets from the consumption of, of this piece of art. So we're going to ask people to report those numbers. And uh, let's consider the two interesting cases. The first case that's going to be interesting for us is when Charlie wins. So in particular, I'm going to assume that uh, Charlie's value minus 7 is greater than Bob's value and is greater than David's value. Uh, this, is, this is important to us because these, these numbers are actually correspond to the sum of everybody's utility from each of the three alternatives. So this tells us that from a utilitarian perspective, given the piece to Charlie, it's better than giving it to Bob and it's better than giving it to David. Uh, that means that the efficient allocation with Charlie in society is to give the object to Charlie. And if Charlie was not a member of society and we wanted to maximize the, the utilities of other people, then we would like to give the object to Bob. All right, so with those two observations in mind, then we can compute what the VCG transfers would be for this set. All right, so these are actually steps one and three of the computation of the VCG transfers following the algorithm we talked about before. So, if we give the object to Charlie, which is the efficient thing to do when Charlie is around, then the total utility of Bob and David um, would be equal to, well, Bob gets zero and David gets minus seven from the externality. In contrast, if Charlie was not around, uh, then we would give the object to Bob, in which case Bob would get uh, his value and David would get zero because in that case there is no externality. So the total, um, the total utility would just be Bob's utility from having the object. The difference between the two numbers, which would be the VCG transfer, it's going to be equal to Bob's value. Um, it's, it's going to be to equal to minus 7, which is the first case, minus the second case, uh, which should be minus Bob's value. So that's going to be the VCG transfer that... Um, that the VCG mechanism would, would ask Charlie to pay if people reported truthfully in this case, it would be equal to, to the second highest value or second highest bid uh, because it depends on reported values 
but he would also have to pay the externality that he's imposing over there. Now let's consider a second case. Uh, in this second case, let's consider the situation where Bob would win the auction. So it's a fee, the efficient outcome is to give the object to Bob. Uh, but the second person, if Bob was not around, the person that would win is Charlie. That case is going to be interesting because when uh, Bob wins, he's actually going to protect David from the externality and he has to be compensated for that. Let's look, let's see that formally. Uh, with, with Bob in society, it's sufficient to give him the object. Without Bob in society, it's sufficient to give it to Charlie. So with Bob in society, the sum of Charlie's value plus David's value, it's just going to be equal to zero because in that case, there are no externalities. In contrast, if Bob was not in society, then the sum of Charlie's value plus David's value would be as follows. Charlie would obtain the object, would consume the object, and therefore the utility that, that uh, Charlie would get is just her value for the object. But David would suffer the externality, which is equal to minus f. So the total utility would be equal to Charlie's value uh, for the object minus 7. And this minus 7 is going to be reflected in the difference between uh, the two numbers. It's going to show up with a plus sign in this case. Uh, because we're subtracting, so the, the, the total difference is going to be minus Charlie's value plus 7. And that is precisely what the VCG transfer uh, should be. So in this case, because the presence of Bob is, pre is protecting Charlie from the externality, when Bob is around, Charlie doesn't get the object and therefore David doesn't suffer the externality, David benefits from Bob's presence in society and therefore uh, the mechanism says let's compensate Let's compensate, um, let's compensate Bob. Now, before moving forward, I want to make a point, which is that uh, these, com these compensations have nothing to do with fairness or justice. Uh, these are just part of the rules of the game. And the reason why we have them here is because they are going to help us to create the right incentives for people to report their tax. Whether this mechanism is fair or not, well, that's a question for social welfare, not for mechanism design. So you can go back to the beginning of the course where, where we talked about welfare and you can think about, about uh, fairness in that context. For now, I'm telling you what the rules of the mechanism are and we're just analyzing whether this mechanism is going to help us to achieve Pareto efficiency or not and whether it's going to be efficient, um, incentive compatible or not. And the answer to both questions is going to be yes. The VCG mechanism is always efficient and it's always incentive compatible, which are great news. So it appears to be the solution to the question we asked at the beginning of this part of the course. Although, as we will see in the next lecture, it still has some issues. Let us finish today's video with, um, with a justification of why is it that this mechanism is incentive compatible. And for that purpose, let us look again at the formula of the VCG transfers. So according to the VCG mechanism, every individual whether they win or not an auction. Remember that the VCG mechanism is designed for general social choice problems, not just for the allocation of a single object. Um, the, the, the rule is that you pay what would be the utility of everybody, the maximum utility, I'm sorry, the utility of everybody else in the efficient utilitarian allocation given the reported types if person I was a member of society minus the maximum utility that other people could achieve um, if person I was not a member of society. So let me, let me take this formula and uh, I want to plug it into the utility that individual I would receive uh, if you were actually to pay the mechanism. So with our, uh, with our quasi linearity assumption, the utility for person I is equal to her value evaluated at the, at the efficient alternative given the reported types uh, plus whatever transfer she receives or she has to pay. So we just need to, to write everything we wrote at the top. We need to write it again at the bottom. It's going to be um, the utility of everybody else evaluated at the utilitarian uh, alternative minus the maximum utility that people other than I could obtain if I was not a member of society. All right. The neat thing about this formula is that we can split it into two terms. The second term, let's start with it because it's easier, uh, you can think that B star 
is determined without taking nice preferences into account because V star is the alternative it's the utilitarian alternative when I is not a member of society. So it, I's utility doesn't enter anyway, therefore I's report is not going to enter anyway and because we're not adding up I's utility, um, this second term is completely independent of I's report. And all incentives are going to be driven by the first term. Now, the first term is nothing more than the sum of everybody's utility, including person I. So the way to maximize everybody's utility it's to choose precisely the utilitarian alternative. And the way for person I to guarantee that, that we choose the utilitarian alternative is to report truthfully. So if person I reports truthfully, we, chose, we choose A star of B I and, and B hat minus I, which is precisely the alternative that, that is going to maximize this first term. And uh, therefore, by, by, by having this transfer scheme, we have guaranteed that I's incentives, once you take transfers into account, are perfectly aligned with social incentives. Uh, and, and notice that this is going to be true regardless of whether other people are lying or not, which means that, that truth-telling is going to be weakly dominant, which means that our mechanism is going to be incentive compatible. So let us recap. By construction, the VCG mechanism always chooses the efficient alternative given the reported types, and therefore it's going to be uh, efficient. Now, when we write down the utility as a function of reports, we have to take into account both utility and transfers. And we have chosen a transfer rule that, in a very clever way, that guarantees that when people try to, to choose a report to maximize their own utility, the report is also going to be the report that maximizes uh, social welfare given the reports of other people. And, and uh, that guarantees that the mechanism is going to be also incentive compatible. Now, this second term of, of, of the transfers, you might, you might be thinking about what's the role that it plays, and we're going to talk about that next class. Um, and because next class we're going to talk about situations in which the VCG mechanism actually has some problems, the problems that it has is that sometimes it's going to run a deficit, which means that the total sum of the contributions of the different agents is going to be negative. So the person running the mechanism would actually have to pump in money for things to work out. The purpose of the second term is to minimize the amount of money that we need to, that we need to inject into the mechanism. But that's going to be the topic for next class. Uh, see you then.